everyone and welcome to Rule Breaker. Today we're going to take a look at the eight new technology cards from Twilight Imperium's Prophecy of Kings expansion. Uh, there is two of each color basically. Uh, two green, two yellow, two red and two blue. Let's take a look at them in detail and see what's good about them. Alright, so something to note about these new techs. The eight of them are all actually technology cards. None of them are unit upgrades. Um, and a good few of them are related to the new factions in the expansion and you get them with them uh, some of them at the start of the game and um, but that doesn't mean you can't use them as any other race they are technologies for every uh, player they come in each of the eight colors um, in the game so they're just a part of the technology pool now so let's start with this one psychoarchaeology and it reads you can use technology specialities on planets you control without exhausting them even if those planets are exhausted. During the action phase, you can exhaust planets you control that have technology specialities to gain one trade good. So this is interesting for a few reasons. Um, for putting this into play as one of your technologies, essentially what you're doing is you're saying that when a technology has a bunch of prereqs on it, um, instead of having to use a planet card with a discount on it, like this example here, where the yellow is a discount here, Instead of having to exhaust that card so that you can't use the resources, um, you can just leave it um, uh, normal um, and it still applies. So think about this as like a, an investment if you're doing a lot of technology um, or you're planning on scoring a lot of objectives to do a technology. Um, I feel like this one was put in kind of as a chance to give some factions a chance to catch up um, to other factions like the Jolnar. Um, I feel like I'm going to be playing this one a lot in the um, in the early game if I get a section of the board that has a lot of these uh, planets with the with the technology prereq discounts on them. So I'm interested to see how this one folds into the game. And moving on to our second technology of the expansion, the other green one, um, Biostims. So this one is um, a little different in that it actually requires um, a green to already be built. Um, and it reads, you may exhaust this card at the end of your turn to ready one of your planets that has a technology speciality or one of your other technologies. So I guess using the example of, of Lazar again here with the yellow discount on it, if for some reason you have this exhausted, maybe you spent the resources on it, um, you can exhaust Biostims to unexhaust the planet like so. Um, likewise, you can um, unexhaust a technology. An example of that would be Graviton Laser System, where you exhaust the card um, before you use Space Cannon, and then the hits have to be on non-fighters. If you've exhausted that in a previous combat, you can use Bio Stims to ready it again for another fight. So lots of practical application with that one. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it's going to be a pretty good one to to use in the game. Again, depending on your faction, but. Um, if you've got a bunch of technologies that have the exhaust um, state on them, this is one to consider quite quite thoroughly. All right, we're going to move on to the yellow technologies now, and the first one is this guy, ScanLink Drone Network. Um, it's one with no prerequisite. Uh, it reads: When you activate a system, you may explore one planet in that system that contains one or more of your units. So essentially, what this is for is for use with the new Explore. Uh, action in the game so usually when you get into a system um, you can land people on the planet to explore it what this technology allows you to do is explore the planet without taking over the planet maybe as a way to explore it before dropping anything onto the planet as a safety measure um, or maybe because you just don't have any infantry on your ship or you want to explore faster um, this is what I think that does um, I reckon we'll see interesting stuff come out of the first games of Prophecy of Kings when this is involved. It definitely feels like the kind of technology you would have early if you were going to go heavy on exploring um, and I'm excited to see where that leads. Alright, moving on to the second yellow technology from the expansion um, is Predictive Intelligence. Um, this one has a one yellow requirement so you need a yellow one before it in order to, to play it. Um, and it reads, at the end of your turn, you may exhaust this card to redistribute your command tokens. When you cast votes during the agenda phase, you may cast three additional votes. If you do, 
and the outcome you voted for is not resolved, exhaust this card. So this is kind of two technologies in one. It's definitely a card of two parts. Um, the first part being um, exhaust at the end of your turn to redistribute your command tokens. So that's moving things between fleet pool and strategy um, and those areas of your board like this. Just to give a quick example, let's say you've got your sheet here and during your turn you've got something like uh, something like this going on where you've got 131. Um, when your turn is over, and that's really important, it can't be during your turn, it has to be as soon as you've finished your turn. Um, you can exhaust the technology to like move some stuff around. Maybe you have no fleets for some reason. You want to move things into strategy or tactics to resolve that and get it, get back into a, into a good place. Or maybe someone has removed one of your fleet tokens and you need to move things back in in order to rebuild. Um, so that's really useful practical application of the um, of the technology. The other one is a bit more um, specific. Um, adding three votes during the agenda phase. Um, the wording of this makes me believe that you can't do the second part if the card is already exhausted because the penalty for doing the second part of uh, the tech and getting it wrong is exhausting the card. Um, so I believe um, when you're voting you can only use these three votes if this card isn't exhausted. Um, and three additional votes in agenda phase is pretty useful. Like uh, I don't know about you guys but a lot of time when I play and the um, agenda phase comes up. Sometimes quite a lot of people save their resources or votes um, just in case um, for the next round and they, they don't vote a lot. So three feels like a like a su substantial amount to have. Um, so kind of a two technologies in one kind of card. Really interesting. Looking forward to seeing how it plays in the game. All right, the next one, we're halfway there already. Um, the first of the red technologies, the AI development algorithm. Um, it's a no prereqs one. Uh, when you research a unit upgrade technology, you may exhaust this card to ignore any one prerequisite. When one or more of your units use production, you may exhaust this card to reduce the combined cost of to produce units by the number of unit upgrade technologies you own. Try to say that five times in a row. Um, so there, yeah, this is uh, again two-part technology. Um, I see this being like a kind of a quick way to get Warsons in. Um, this itself is a red, which is a prerequisite for Warsons. And then you could exhaust it as a second red um, to, to make the real cost of war zones be a red and a yellow. Um, with other, techno uh, other technology red type um, starter technologies going on for a faction, you're really reducing the cost of getting war zones into the game. Um, so that could, be, that could be pretty interesting to see them come in much quicker in the game. Um, so all you would do is exhaust this guy to remove one of these costs. And the same goes for other... Um, units, uh, unit upgrades. Um, as for the second half of the card, it's just a flat reduction on building stuff. So like if you've got three um, unit upgrades uh, built on your board, um, you're reducing your cost of your production by three. So that's a nice combo. It's like if you don't want to do any um, uh, unit upgrade technology stuff this round you could use this card's exhaust action for um, reducing the cost of building a bunch of units likewise if you want to get one of these new shiny cards in you're just going to be paying a premium for the rest of your resources for the the rest of the turn um, so this is definitely like a race to have a big army style um, technology um, so that, again I feel like that's going to really speed up the start of the game getting big armies and fleets going um yeah that's gonna be really really fun to see that see that flourish in the game i also noticed that the um the nas roca guys start with this technology so that's something to think about when looking into them as well and just to note that this combo is nicely with bio stems that we talked about a few minutes ago where you could use it for one purpose and then you could exhaust bio stems to ready it again and then use it for the other purpose um, or probably even the same purpose twice on the card so having these two together works really nicely. Um, so lots of really good utility in these early cheap new technologies. Just super cool. Uh, moving on to the sixth of the technologies, the second red one. It's self-assembly routines. Um, this has a cost prereq of one red technology before it. And it reads, after one or more of your units use production, you may exhaust this card to place one mech from your reinforcements on a planet you control in that system. After one of your mechs is destroyed, gain one trade good. 
Uh, so mechs have a cost on them. Um, in the case of the old mech, it's two. It's usually two. Um, and they sit on this new player mat um, that you use the hero, commander, and agent cards with. Um, so you can generally just pay for um, mechs normally. Um, and there's other ways to get them in with this new deploy mechanism as well. Uh, so self-assembly routines is not the only way to get mechs going, but it is a way to get them going in a different way. Um, it is also a way to ignore the cost. Um, so it says place one mech, not produce one mech. So you're basically taking the mech and putting it straight into the system. Um, and it's nice to have a bit of compensation or insurance for when your mech is destroyed that you get one trade good because one trade good is basically half a mech if they cost two. So this self-assembly routines, it makes a lot of sense thematically in that you're building mechs and then they're sort of rebuilding themselves as they go and they die and they get used up. Um, so I think uh, mech-friendly factions are going to really really need this technology to, to keep that cycle going and to build that up quickly. And on to the seventh tech in the expansion, the first of the two blues, it is Dark Energy Tap, and that is a no prereq card. Um, and it reads, after you perform a tactical action in a system that contains a Frontier token, which is one of these guys here, um, if you have one or more ships in that system, explore that token. Your ships can retreat into adjacent systems that do not contain other players' units, even if you do not have units or control planets in that system. So this is the only way that you can interact with the um, exploration of frontier space. Normally you can explore um, planets, but you can't explore these tokens until you have dark energy tap. Um, and the cards basically have lots of different effects on them. Some of them are fragments of relics. Uh, some of them are well, fragments of relics again. Um, effects. Um, I'm not going to show any of those cards just in case anybody doesn't want spoilers um, for their first gameplay, um, but they are quite varied. Um, some of them are um, surprising, let's say. Um, and so you, you need the Dark Energy Tap in order to utilize this new part of the Explorer mechanism in the game. Um, other than that, the card is again another one of those two part technologies, um, and it's to do with retreating. Um, uh, it essentially just gives you more places to retreat to. Um, which is very welcome sometimes when you're in a tight spot. Uh, so that is Dark Energy Tap. Um, so we're moving on to the last technology in the expansion. It's the second of the blue. Um, like the other ones, it follows that pattern. It has a, a single blue prerequisite. And it's called Sling Relay. And it's an action. Uh, so you can do this as your action, like you play an action card or take a tackle action. This is like one of those where you can just, that, that's your whole turn. Um, and it says, exhaust this card to produce one ship in any system that contains one of your space docks. Um, so, new faction, the Nomad, um, has this as their only starting technology. Um, they, yeah, they've got, they've got a fairly normal um, starting units line up there, as you can see. It's just a way to give them more, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's different to production, um, but it says produce. Like, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the place thing. Um, but in this case, you have to pay uh, to put the ship in. Uh, it's not just uh, exhaust it and put anything in. Like You can't just exhaust that and put in a war sun. You've got to uh, pay the cost as you do it. Um, so that's how that works. Kind of standard. You need to have a space dock there. It's not like you can put it anywhere. Um, but again, it's like a, a nice way to do um, an additional unit somewhere where you've maybe already put in your token into the system and used it. Um, like a chance to build a bunch of stuff and then you hit your limit to do production and then you can use this card to have to add an extra unit on top that you feel you might need and um, like a, an extra fighter or even or a whole bunch of um fighters in your normal production and you can reinforce them with like a carrier or something with with the sling relay um and yeah that's it not the most super exciting of the the last ones but i think it might be one of the most uh, useful ones in the game um out of the new eight. So that is the new technologies. All right, that is it for the technologies. Um, Prophecy King's looking really cool. Um, we're gonna follow up this video with the uh, seven faction videos, the overviews, show you how they all work. Um, so yeah, hope you come back to, to, do, to see those and hope you're looking forward to it, I know I am. Um, until then, this has been Rule Breaker. Thanks very much.